welcome to the 67th installment of Tell Him Alejandro. You know more place for sports, cars, video games, fitness. If you're a man, you're here. Mr. Alejandro, I'm about to tell him. What you about to tell him, Alejandro? I'm about to tell you about how the Spurs are spanking OKC in the Western Conference Finals stunner. Tell him, Alejandro! This series, TEA drinkers, I do not even know where to begin. OKC has been playing against the Spurs in a best of seven series, Western Conference Finals. They've played two games so far. OKC has lost both, and they've lost it miserably. It hasn't even been close. Going into the series, we found out Serge Ibaka is injured, and he's done for the rest of the postseason with a calf injury. And it's a significant difference for this OKC team. I feel like he's the third best player on the team. Not having him is going to be a major blow for this team. And it's painful for me to watch OKC lose the way that they're losing. As you can see, the shirt... The bow tie, I'm a big time OKC fan. I'm rooting for them. They got my mans, Russell Westbrook, the Energizer Bunny, and also my other mans, KD, Kevin Durant. To see them lose like this is very painful, but there's definitely still hope. I'm going to give it to y'all. Let's go to game one. OKC lost game one, 105 to 122. And in this game, it was very apparent Serge Ibaka's presence was not there because the Spurs basically had a layup line. Can, Can I get a layup? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the Spurs won 66 to 32 in the paint. It was crazy. Multiply 32 by 2. That's 64. You still don't outscore the Spurs in the paint. It's crazy what the Spurs were doing in the paint. I looked at three starters for OKC. They combined for five points. It's pathetic. It's anemic. Nick Collison, Kendrick Perkins, and Thabo Cephalosha. Non-existent offensively. Now, I know they're not offensive players. I know that. But dang, five points between three players? That's crazy. And we go to game two. Those same three players put up four points. That's pathetic. And OKC looked even worse where they got blown out by 35 points. 77 to 112 in this game. Game two, in my opinion, Serge Ibaka was not the problem. Not having him wasn't the issue. The offense was the problem, and I was shocked to see that OKC had issues offensively when they have, in my opinion, the best scorer in Kevin Durant and another scoring machine in Russell Westbrook. They had issues scoring. I looked at the percentages in game one. OKC shot 46.2%. They got worse in game two where they shot 39.3%. Ugh. Game one, OKC shot 44.4% from the three-point line. They got way worse in game two, shooting 10% from the three-point line. That is awful. Do the math. That's one out of every 10 three-pointers you attempt you make. That's terrible. You guys are NBA professionals. Step it up. Step it up, son. Game one, OKC shot 82.6% from the free throw line. Then in game two, OKC shot 50%. That's Shaquille O'Neal status. They were shooting bricks. They looked so bad in game two. Offense was the problem, and their offense, it looks like the New York Knicks, where there's just a complete lack of ball movement, and they're clearly putting way too much pressure, and they're too reliant upon Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. The supporting cast is not putting in any work at all. Right now, Westbrook and Durant look like LeBron back when he was playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Those guys need help. Everybody else not stepping up. And I kind of blame the coach, Scott Brooks, because he's supposed to be grooming and developing the young players on the roster, and he has not done that. And now he's put in a position where you lose your third best player in Ibaka, big-time defensive anchor for the team, helps on the interior side, and he also helps offensively with a mid-range jump shot. He's kind of wet. And now you have to play these guys who are not producing offensively, and they're old, they're sluggish, they're not looking good. Like I said before, the young guys, he should have been playing them during the regular season develop them, they would be helping right now. For example, Jeremy Lamb. He was Houdinian, basically. He's disappeared, but not Roy Hibbert style. He hasn't even been on the court. He's been on the bench. That's upset me. I feel like he should have been playing. Perry Jones, he's 6'9", 6'10". He could have been helping a lot, helping guard on the perimeter and helping guard on the inside. He's, in my opinion, he's basically a defender. He should have been help holding things down. I blame Scott Brooks for not playing him throughout the season. Also, Steven Adams, he's a seven-footer. He's a banger. He's annoying. People don't like to play against him. He's annoying like a, like a Dennis Rodman, like a Ron Artest. He's the type of player you don't want to go against, but you want on your team. He has sharp elbows. If you get near him, bam, quick. He's going to hit you mad hard. Steven Adams should have been getting more minutes than Perkins, 
Kali, and Cephalosha, especially when those guys, those three starters, combined for nine total points throughout the first two games. That is pathetic. When I also look, I feel like OKC is not using utilizing their strengths, their age, their youth. They should be scoring more points in transition. I look at game one. OKC scored 11 points on the fast break to the Spurs 16 points. You cannot allow a hoopty to beat your Bugatti, Ferrari, Lambo, whatever four are you driving in a race? You cannot let that hoopty, that timing belt is about to break, beat you. Come on, OKC. Step your game up. I saw in game two, they outscored the Spurs in transition by a measly two points, 13 to 11. But that is not enough, OKC. You guys have to start running, start scoring more in transition. I recommend that OKC switch it up. Start playing this, the young guys. Play a small lineup. Reggie Jackson, Russell Westbrook, Perry Jones, Jeremy Lamb. Obviously, KD for MVP. Give Steven Adams some minutes. I like Karan Butler. He's bowling. The Butler did it. He's definitely bowling. But right now, there's no room for the for the old guys, man. Not in this series. You got to run the Spurs out the gym. Treat them like the old farts that they are. Also, I noticed that Danny Green is getting mad three-point shots up against OKC because now they improved their defense in the paint as a unit in game two. It went from 32 to 66 points in the paint in game one to OKC scoring 42 points in the paint in game two to the Spurs 54 points. So OKC improved in that aspect because now they're defending as a team. All five guys are kind of crowding the paint, helping out, making sure the Ibaka loss, you know, isn't penalizing them defensively. But what basically how the Spurs counted was, okay, if you're going to crowd the paint to our one guy who has the ball, we're going to move the ball swiftly. The Spurs are a very smart team, very well-rounded team experienced team, and they can definitely move the ball with quickness. They kept finding their shooters, Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green, Patrick Mills, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, especially Danny Green. He was wet, like I said before. Game one, Danny Green hit six three-pointers, scored 16 points. I'm sorry, he hit four three-pointers. In game two, Danny Green hit seven three-pointers on 21 points. You need to guard Danny Green tight. The Miami Heat exposed Danny Green last season. I remember Danny Green. Danny Green's a great defender, but he's very inconsistent. I remember Green was killing the Miami Heat in that NBA Finals series. Then, when LeBron and Wade started clamping down on Green and started guarding him tight, in Game 6, Danny Green shot 1 for 7, 1 for 5 from the 3-point line. Game 7, with all the marbles in the line, Danny Green shot 1 for 12, 1 for 6 from the 3-point line for only 5 points. Yes, I remember that. You have to play Green tight. And that goes for all shooters. Shooters, most of the time, cannot create their own shot. So you have to play them in the face. You have to get aggressive with them. Get Mr. Alejandro on them. Bite on them, you know what I'm saying? Get on them. Hur, hur, hur. Get on Danny Green. Play some goon defense. Okay, see, there's still hope. Game three, you're going home. You got the home crowd. They're going to be giving you that legendary chant. Oh, KC. KD, you have to find it within yourself. I didn't like some of the defense KD played in the first two games. He wasn't there mentally. He wasn't focused. Westbrook called him out on it. They argued a little bit on the court. They're going to be fine. KD, I need you to lead your squad to victory. The offense is not the problem coming from KD or from Westbrook. They've been playing great. I need to see the supporting cast step up. You guys are going to have the home crowd rooting for you. You're going to have Mr. Alejandro rooting for you. This series is not over. But if OKC loses game three, it's a wrap. There you have it, folks. Mr. Alejandro's feedback on the first two games of the Western Conference Finals. Do you have any suggestions for OKC to possibly come back and make this a legitimate series? Or do you even think OKC has a chance to even come back and make this a series? Tell them in the comments. Tonight's OKC Colored Bow Tie is brought to you by Ralph Lauren. Orange and blue, OKC. I'm still rooting for you. Tune in for more sports, cars, video games, fitness, and all that. Follow at Tell Them Alejandro to hear my immediate reaction to live sports events. Or if you want to hear me cover a certain team or topic, tell them. Outro music! <laughs> okay, C, please make this a competitive series. I'm begging y'all. Russell Westbrook, my mans, I still see you. I definitely see you driving to the hoop extremely hard, not getting fouls called. I see you playing with your heart on your sleeve, play, going hard for me and all the other OKC fans. I respect it. I love you, my dude. KD, I see you out there offensively working, working. I see you getting posted up by Duncan and D.L. because now you're playing a little bit of power forward with no Ibaka. 
I feel for you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe during the off season you can eat some burgers, bulk up a little bit. But uh, okay, see, I still think y'all could do this, man. Pull it out for me, Mr. Alejandro. All the TA drinkers that are rooting for y'all, all the OKC fans that are rooting for y'all. This is important. Don't lose like this, please, please. I'm begging y'all. I'm begging y'all. Hey, I'm begging y'all to get funky, get funky, get funky. Let's get it. Ah, uh, T E A, T E A, T E A, T E A, A.